Hey, this is Cats Me Out 492, and you are watching Basic Options Math. Our goals here are going to be to understand the underlying math of the Greeks, understand how market changes affect the Greeks, understand how the Greeks affect our position, and finally, how to use the Greeks to minimize risk and maximize gains. The first one we'll go over is delta. Delta is a nonlinear change meaning it's constantly changing with stock price. For a call, delta is always positive. For a put, delta is always negative. Because delta changes with stock price, you can see that when the position's price is far out of the money or too far in the money, the change in delta is at its minimum. And when it's at the money, it's at its maximum. It's optimized just after it's at the money. So what's this mean for us as traders? It means delta changes more at the money. Because of this, after we reach at the money, our risk to reward diminishes. But why? That brings us to gamma. Gamma is the change in delta. Gamma, unlike delta, is linear, meaning it doesn't change. For a call, gamma is always positive. For a put, gamma is always negative. When you add delta and gamma, you get the total change in option value per dollar change in option price. So let's get into the math of gamma, and believe me, there's a lot of it. Gamma is the second derivative of stock price, and the first derivative of delta. There's some extraordinarily complicated math behind the calculation of gamma, but for now, we'll skip that and just focus on the variables important to us as traders. Gamma is calculated using the strike price, standard normal cumulative distribution, risk-free rate, volatility, stock price, and time to expiry. It is inversely correlated to the time to expiry and strike price of the option, meaning gamma goes down as they get higher. It is directly correlated to the risk-free rate, volatility, and stock price, meaning gamma goes up as they get higher. You're probably asking yourself by now, so what does this even mean? It means as options buyers, what we're looking for is lower volatility, lower risk-free rate, lower dollar cost per days to expiry, and a smaller difference between the strike and market price per dollar cost. As sellers, we want higher volatility, higher risk-free rate, higher dollar per cost to days to expiry, and a higher difference between the strike and the market price per dollar cost. Though the bottom line here is you can really only control the strike price, expiry date, and the volatility when you enter. Now, let's look at a graph of gamma against stock price to gain some more insight about how this all fits together. When you look at a graph, you can see that gamma is actually at its peak when the option is at the money. Gamma is minimized both when it's too far out of the money or too far in the money. This means to us as traders, once your option is in the money, you're actually risking more and more profit for more and more marginal gains, meaning sometimes earlier exits are a better way to protect your profits. So if you've stuck with me so far, thank you. I swear to God, the rest gets easier. That's it for gamma. Let's move on to theta. Theta is a little bit more intuitive than gamma. Theta is a flat nonlinear, meaning it does change, but not enough to worry about. Theta is always negative, meaning it drives down the value of your option. And theta is also affected by volatility. During periods of high volatility, Theta is often greater. The last Greek to go over is Vega. Vega is simple linear, meaning it changes constantly with volatility. It's the percent change in price per the percent change in volatility. Because of its relationship with volatility, this means when IV is higher, options prices are also higher. Finally, Vega affects options with farther away expiries more. Longer options are more sensitive to volatility.
So let's just go through a real life example here of an option you might place. I probably won't because I'm not really sure what the market's going to do today, but hopefully this will be useful for you in the future when you're deciding whether or not to place an option order. So the ticker we're looking at right now is SPY, which is sitting somewhere around 242. 243 something like that it's been up and down between 235 245 channel all day so let's say we're thinking about buying a put for 244 now as you'll go through the order book to different dates you will notice that as you pick farther away expiries they become more and more expensive and remember or recall that the gamma is related to the time to expiry and it's inversely related. So the quicker expiries with shorter times to expiry have higher gammas. Um, the next thing you'll notice is probably the break-even price. So if we buy this put for $244, it doesn't mean that it's profitable, it's in the money once we hit the 244 price. And you will recall from the video that delta and gamma are both highest at the money. This means that not only does it have to hit the money, it has to extend past that and actually be in the money. And you'll recall that delta or gamma decreases the farther in the money you go. That's why you have to consider these spreads before you buy them. If you're buying something too in the money, or you have to be too far in the money for it to break even, you're essentially shooting yourself in the foot because you're getting less and less gamma as it gets more and more in the money. So it becomes more and more difficult to reach that target. And I think when you look at an options order book, those are the two most important things to cover. You can also look at the implied volatility at the time you buy it to figure out whether or not you're getting a discount on that option or you're buying at a premium. I have Yahoo Finance right up right now and we have the historical volatility down here. And you can see that the historical volatility is almost at the maximum it's ever been. I looked at another website and for the past year, the current volatility on SPY is in the 99th percentile. So out of 99 out of 100 historic volatilities, today would be the first or second highest historic volatility in the last 365 days of SPY's history. So you can see how that contributes to a higher theta. If you remember, it affects the theta. Um, it also affects the vega. So your theta is gonna be higher, your vega is gonna be higher, and you can see how that makes it so each day you hold that option, it drags down the price more than it would on a less volatile day. So right now, um, to use this practically, I would only make an options trade if I was sure, if I knew in my soul the market was going in that direction. Now, why is that? Because this is in the money, right? This is... To break even, we don't only have to get in the money, we have to get pretty far in the money, which means we're losing gamma as we approach our break even. So what is our chance of profit there, right? We're just losing gamma as we get closer. Once we pass it and we start actually making profit, our delta and gamma aren't as high as they would be if this break even price was closer to the at the money price. In addition, the volatility is high, so you're experiencing a lot of theta decay. And then the final thing is, if the volatility levels off, remember, an options value is directly related and linearly related to the volatility. So if the volatility declines while you're holding this option, if you get one far out, uh, you're going to experience what a lot of traders call IV crush which is when the implied volatility decreases, thereby decreasing the value of your option. Remember, those two things are directly correlated. So this option is not a good deal right now. I'm not going to buy it. It's way too far at a premium. 
So I hope that helped. Um, if you'd like to use the same platform and brokerage as I do, this brokerage is called Weeble. They're great. I've loved them so far. There's a link in the description down below. Also, as well as my Twitter link and um, my Reddit account. Uh, thanks for watching. Look out for the next video and please subscribe.